Today is February 1st. Yesterday, me and my dad, he, we came out and set uh, I think seven traps for some muskrats. And let's see if we have anything. I can see it up there. Oh, okay. Just was checking it for. All right. Well, let's, check uh, one by the yep. Let's go get us a. I mean, we got left to check. Uh. Let's see, we just checked four. I think we have about three over there, right? Four. Yep. Don't slip sliding the pond. <laughs> Okay. May got so cold last night they didn't move yeah. to feed anyway. Yeah, your deep your deep den sets may have produced, but doesn't look like they got out and fed. It was twenty five for the low. We're expecting more freezing rain tonight. So you, you checked how many? Four? Oh, uh, let's see. We have four on that side. Yeah, three in the end, one on the edge. Look at those, look at those maple buds. Right here. Those were already, already blooming. Look at this one, Daddy. The flower got ice over. Cased in a little sheet of ice. All right, back to the business at hand. So you sent me. Well, you made a catch right there. Pistol. Back up, pistol. Back up, pistol. Back up. Where'd you set the other one at? Was that over here? Let me see if I can kind of get this down in there. With it. What happened there? I hit the volume. Did you go back to record? Yep, we're live. Or commented it's not very not very bloody a lot of that's due to the fact that you know we didn't shoot him and the trap doesn't so it doesn't have any the exit trap, holes no, or the trap doesn't really break his fur at all or any of the meat pistol is throwing a fit to get in here at this thing. You think he likes to eat muskrat? I don't know. Who is it that normally eats it? Well, I've got a friend. 
I used to work with. He come from Ohio and he trapped a lot of rats up there. And uh, they actually ate them. And Can I say them, good? And I have skinned them and gave them to him and see how easy that wants to come off there. How long has it been since you've trapped a uh, muskrat? Well, about, oh, I don't know, a few years back, probably 10, eight or 10 years back, I had a little extra time and I went and trapped and I caught uh, 47 of these in about a week span. How many traps did you have set? Uh, I was running about two dozen, not very many. Did you ever forget where you set them? Well, let's put it this way. I, I had to look around a little bit sometimes. Those rods. Then you pull with a knife in your hand. Those rods are hard to see. They are once they get a little coat of rust on them. Did Paul trap? Oh, yeah. See this right? We're going to take a little of this off. It looks kind of like a deer. About as well get it off here now. So Just do you do this stretcher. like you do a, um, a beaver? No, a beaver actually cuts from its bottom jaw between its teeth. Right down back to its tail, and you take its tail off. Cause I remember when you put when you would like tan them, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, how you would put the beaver on? Tag them, tag them to that board, and yeah. Do you do that with a muskrat? I'm gonna show you. We're gonna stretch him. Okay. I'll show you how he goes on the stretcher. What are we gonna do with the meat? Well. I think we'll just let old pistol have him. Okay. There's not very much. Get anything. No, a muskrat's kind of bony like a, kind of built like a squirrel or a rabbit. And they don't have a lot of meat on them. They don't have a lot of fat on them. It's... Looks but like he's a, a herbivore. He doesn't eat anything but plants, roots, and such. Is that why he likes the pond? Because all the out, because all the plants grow from mm -hmm. the bottom stuff. All right, let's see if we can get this on down here a little bit without turning him up. Is he going? Uh, it looks like it. Okay. Yeah, everything's all the little ligaments and stuff are. Tearing. All the little ligaments are turning loose. That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Now there's his leg. Oh, uh, you got one tight over here. Okay. On the back. They are soft, though. And it smelled pretty good before. To be a little creature out of the pond, he did smell clean, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Look at that, did you see that? Mm -hmm. Let me see what I'm doing here. You might have to skin the next one. You work your thumbs in under his leg. Okay. Pull that hide up until it comes down and catches right there on his foot. Okay. And then you just cut this right around here. Around his like that, right around his wrist. Look at that. Huh. And it just comes off? And it just comes off. This seems way easier than a deer. Just like that. And then do you have to finish pulling? Yep. Like and then is we that... gotta skin, skin this off of his head. Is that and hard? there's a spot right here. Look right there. See, we just, we just cleanly took an ear. 
That ought to be it. Ear right there. Yep. See that pop open? Mm-hmm. And you stay above the hide. What the kind jaw. of teeth do they have? Do they well, have? Well, I'm gonna show them to you. They kind of got little beaver teeth. What did, are their teeth just for? Um, like they don't have purpose like the deers. I mean like the beavers. Yeah, like for, they don't have to be sharp enough. They're for peeling bark and Are they as sharp as beaver? Yeah. See I'm wadding that up, putting pressure right up against the right up here against him. Yeah. Keeping that hide kinda coming is that is that knife. Works it down. Look now they got, see how they got fatty cheeks? See how way back in there his jaws start? Yeah. We're going to take that off. We don't want that on the hide when we... Do you have to have special knives? Well, basically it just helps that you get a good sharp knife. So there's like not a certain knife that you have to have to do this? Well, one that you can handle. And how? I've scanned them with a pocket knife, but. Was your pocket knife sharp? Yep, you gotta have a sharp one. That way it doesn't like mess up the fur. Well, sometimes two sharps is bad and you can cut holes in them. But you don't want it to be too dull because then it's Well, hard. when you get them down this far. Mm hmm. It's not that it would be a big deal if we messed up right now. Because not much of this is used in garment making. Yeah. Where's that air coming from that you're squeezing out? Coming out of this. Chest cavity, I guess. Hmm. They are built like a squirrel, though. Yep. Okay, now let's see there. Mm -hmm. Here's his, down here at his teeth. And you come in between his teeth and his lip. Okay. We'll work that off. Now, the pelt hung on his top teeth. Can you get right here? And that cartilage right there is where his nose is at. So when it's soft, you cut in right there, okay? okay. And there it is. Now, you wanted to see his teethies? Oh, they do kind of look like beaver teeth. Except for smaller. Huh. Do they only have those two, those four? Those four that I know of. All right, let me show you. We've got him pretty good shape. Okay. I've trimmed off what was going to be a problem. We've got his nose. We've got his lip. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to flip him outside and shake him off. Turn him inside out. Like that. There's his bottom lip. There's his little nose. <laughs> his whiskers. So you keep most of all of his things. Oh, they make pretty earmuffs or gloves or collars or liners. Or they can make full coats out of them. All right, we're going to give him a little shake and get the rest of that water. Look how pretty his fur is looking now. Yeah. See how slick that is? Yeah. Wet spot. Okay, now. 
You wait right there just one second and I will grab a stretcher and I'll show you how to put him on a stretcher. Okay, so when you hang muskrats, beaver, or anything else, you hang them to the head down. Okay. You hang them to the head down so that the grease and oils, as these dry, run to the head because you remember what i said about it it's not that we're going to do anything with it so if the grease and the fat stays on it very long it tends to ruin that area and not this this real pretty soft area down here okay okay so we've got him back inside out and we're going to work him on this wire stretcher okay okay just like so and see how that's thinning all the <coughs> all the membrane and the fat that we left on him so we're gonna get him squared up here Scoot him around here, get his little legs out in the open. His tail's gonna be in the middle. Roll him right down. Give him a little twist here. Let's get pretty close to being dead center. Okay. Now, you stay with me just one more minute. I should have grabbed me. I need three clothespins, I'll show you why. Okay, well, we've showed everybody the important part for this. We'll go ahead and I'll hook up the, the stretcher hooks here. Pull him tight. Remember, we're, we're doing the, we want him to be stretched. So these little barbs here. Go in just like that. Okay, now we've got him pulled tight there. What I wanted the clothespins for, and I'll go find them. I will put a clothespin right here, pull that down. I'll put a clothespin right here, pull that down. I'll trim this off so it makes a nice sleeping edge. 
and then I'll put a clothespin right here to hold his nose up center and then I might even since he's kind of damp I'll put a little wedge up in here to where the air can flow but other than that that's how you skin and stretch a muskrat